It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Carolina Hurricanes team photographer, Greg for work. How are you doing today? I'm well, Brandon. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to work on the professional level photographing sports games? Sure. Um, when I first thought about uh, photographing anything, I thought, gosh, sports would be the thing I'd want to do because that's you know, I played it in, um, in high school and college, and then I realized it wasn't going to go any further than that for me personally. So to get to the games, I needed to have some sort of mechanism for that. And um, so I, uh, I liked photography and I thought maybe I'll, maybe I'll try sports. And, and I, I got lucky and I, I, I found a client pretty early on and, um, and that's 30, well, I'm in my 33rd year of doing this. Did you first start out working with professional teams or were you working, of course, with high school teams and then working your way up? Right. For me, it worked out that I, um, I found a minor league baseball team in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, it was the, the Charlotte Knights and uh, it was their double A team when they were double uh, A for the Chicago Cubs. Um, I, I met um, the general manager who was a professional football player, uh, former professional football player, Roman Gabriel. And uh, Roman, who, who played for the Los Angeles Rams, was one of my heroes in the 60s. And so when I realized that he was the general manager for the Knights, I thought, I'm going to talk to this guy and I'm going to appeal to him to let me uh, photograph some of his players. And he, he literally walked me over and introduced me to four or five, I think, of his guys and said, you need to photograph these guys provide me with eight by tens, and then I'll sell them in my gift shop. And, um, and the rest is history. I, I took those pictures and I sent them to Topps baseball cards and they gave me an opportunity. And so here I sit. Can you talk about, of course, working with Topps baseball cards and what that's been like? Yeah, it's been, um, it's just been an extraordinary experience. Um, it, it put me in every stadium um, in the country. Um, I photographed baseball, football, basketball, and hockey for them when, when they were doing all those things. Um, gave me an opportunity to see firsthand just the kind of work that goes into uh, being an athlete. And um, so I was able to make personal uh, relationships with a few of the players. And, but mo more importantly, I was able to uh, build my photography experience from um, barely knowing uh, what an F-stop was to um, setting up studios and, and photographing players in settings where their only reason to be there was for me to photograph them. And, and my only reason for being there was to provide imagery for uh, Topps trading cards or some professional sports team. Of course, with working with Topps baseball cards, were you only working on the minor league level or did you also have to work like with the Yankees and such like that? Yeah, we got to work um, with minor league guys at the beginning of their career, which was great. Um, I worked with uh, Chipper Jones when he came in the league and, and Manny Ramirez and, uh, you know, a few other guys that, that are kind of household names now are Hall of Fame names. And, and so, um, so you started out with minor leaguers, but at the same time, you're going to the big league level and covering games. So I, it wasn't uncommon for me to cover three or four games in one week uh, in different parts of the country. And I would make my trips based on um, regions in the, in the country. So Tops would call me and they'd say, hey, can you put a trip together that covers uh, five or six teams and, and do that um, in an area of the country where they don't have um, uh, closed roofs? Because in those days we were shooting film and uh, imagery did not look very good. So I liked the Midwest and I'd cover both Chicago teams, Milwaukee and St. Louis, and I'd I'd get them a lot of stuff. And then, then the next week um, I would go up to Boston and I'd catch the Red Sox and I'd catch the Yankees. And um, 
and I'd get a, t a team that was leaving town and then I'd catch a team that was coming into town and then I'd scoot out and go somewhere else. And so it was pretty easy to get maybe five different teams in three days. What was it like during your time shooting games for a course at the Yankee Stadium and at the Red Sox Stadium? Um, I, so shooting in Fenway was... Um, was just a, a wonderful experience because when you when you look at that big green monster and you see all these dots on the wall you could you know I sort of fantasize you know that's Ted Williams right there and and that's Kari Yastrzemski and it's possible that you know that Babe Ruth made one of those dents and so um, you know when I was first getting into it I was just amazed at just the history uh, behind it and then um, of course going to Yankee Stadium um, I, I was not a Yankee fan because I've been a Detroit Tiger fan all my life, but you cannot deny the, um, the legend and the lore and the, the greatness of that franchise. Um, so as a, uh, as a fan of baseball and a fan of sports, um, <laughs> going to Yankee Stadium was like none other. You couldn't go to Yankee Stadium and not just feel um, the history of the game. Um, you go out there to Monument Park and walk around. Oh man, I mean, that was um, an experience that, as a you know, as a kid uh, enjoying the game of baseball, that you know could only for me be compared to the first time I stepped on the field at uh, the original Tiger Stadium um, in Detroit. What was that like? Of course, photographing the Tigers, as you are a fan of the Tigers. Uh, I was afraid to meet Al Kaline because I didn't want, um, I didn't want to meet a guy and have him not turn out to be as great a person as I hoped he would be. And, um, and of course, as it turned out, he was uh, better than I had hoped um, the first time I met him. And of course, it was well after his playing days, but um, I did an autograph session with him for Topps baseball cards. And uh, I got to sit with him and watch him sign his name and uh, tell stories about um, being a Detroit Tiger. It's pretty neat. What is it like, of course, covering the U.S. baseball? USA baseball in Cary, North Carolina. The um, the training facility there is um, it's really exceptional and uh, and growing. And uh, the thing I like about it most is um, catching players as they're coming up into the game and seeing um, the way they respond when they meet a former big leaguer who's coaching them. Um, and I think it's uh, I don't know. I just spent I just spent a few days with them in Florida. I just got home on on Sunday morning, and um, uh, this is the the U eighteen national team. And uh, you know, it's just really great watching these guys blossom. Uh, you catch them at eighteen years old, and there was there was one kid in particular that was he was man size. He was a he was a very large individual. And I thought the guy he made me think of was uh, Jim Tomey. I caught Jim Tomey at the beginning of his career. And of course, Jim Tomey's a Hall of Famer now, uh, but they called Jim Tomey the man child because at 18 years old, he was the size of a man. And um, his personality and, and, and his, um, his attitude was just exceptional and, and uh, really a, a fun part of uh, being a photographer. You know, you could get out there and, and document it and, uh, and be able to watch him play. Of course, as you talked about photographing Hall of Famers. What is it like, of course, seeing the Hall of Famers that you might have photographed as youth go on to, of course, the professional level and into the Hall of Fame? Well, it makes it, it, makes it easier to um, have a relationship with them um, as insofar as a, a photographer can have that relationship. Um, it makes it easier to, to talk to them because you saw them come in and you're seeing them on their way out and, and then you see them as they become coaches and then they become a hall of famer. And um, I just remember them, you know, when they were young and first getting in the game and um, that makes them more approachable. So it probably makes me um, a, a little less uh, in awe and makes me look a little less, you know, starstruck, I guess, um, because, you know, I, I knew them when, and, um, and they know that I knew them when, and, you know, they're just, they're just men and just like you and me, and they're just trying to um, live their life and and, um, and do it as a Hall of Famer, which is kind of neat. What was it like the first time you got to cover a college game at NC State, and what sports do you cover for NC State? Well, the first game I ever covered in sports for Tops 
um, was at uh, NC State in their stadium. There was not an NC State player on the field at the time, but it was the Philadelphia Eagles against the New York Jets, and they were trying to showcase NFL football in the state of North Carolina to potentially have a professional football team someday. And so it was an exhibition game. Um, it was actually the very first event Tops ever sent me uh, for somewhere. And um, so I remember, um, I remember going to the stadium and thinking, gosh, you know, this is, this is really amazing. You know, I'm, I'm actually, I get to go on the field and I can bring my camera and I can take pictures and nobody's going to try and stop me. Um, so uh, years later, I had opportunities to shoot at NC State, but I didn't do it because my kids were young and they were playing sports and I wanted to see my kids do stuff on Saturdays. So I kind of skipped uh, doing college sports and then Oh, maybe I think it was six or seven years ago, um, I started shooting some football for NC State, and um, I'm their primary football photographer now. Um, I actually secretly, not anymore, I guess, I prefer it to the NFL because I like the atmosphere. Uh, I just love the Saturday afternoon um, and evening, um, well, and now it's, now it's some Thursday nights. Um, experience because the students are there, the, the, the players are into it, and uh, you know there's fireworks and, and everybody's excited to be there. What is it like, of course, being on the field at NC State and even other sports stadiums, photographing games and having that front row seat that not many other people get to have? I remember um, the first few my mouth was kind of a gape and I was in awe because of the, the size and scope and, and the, uh, from one event to the next, some can be bigger than others. So if you cover the Super Bowl, that seems like it's the biggest. Uh, the Stanley Cup finals, that's enormous. Um, so there's a little bit more on the line there. But one thing as a photographer, we all have to remember, no matter what the game is, that is that um, there's, you have a job to do. Um, you have to go about it professionally. You don't, even as a team photographer for the Carolina Hurricanes, I, I, I try not to uh, overtly cheer too much, but there's certain guys I like to see score. And, uh, and of course, if they're for my team, that I'm, I'm cheering more. Um, so walking in to a, a stadium, you try to keep it um, in check, you know, in terms of your, your emotion, because uh, it can easily overwhelm you and you don't want that to happen. What was it like the first time you got to cover the Carolina Hurricanes? Uh, so we that was um, that was in uh, 1997 in Greensboro, North Carolina uh, was uh, it was a game at um, at the Greensboro Coliseum. There were very few people there. Uh, people didn't really know much about hockey in this part of the country and the ones that did were really into it uh, so we um we tried to we tried to introduce a fairly new sport and an absolutely completely new team to uh to the state of north carolina so it was a it was a really fun experience can you talk about of course a typical game day like for you covering the carolina hurricanes right um when i when i show up and it's not a, a covid year um, I, I go down to my office, um, I get the computers ready, um, I try to get myself organized for um, what I need to do that game. Uh, sometimes there's a, sometimes I have to shoot a headshot of a player and I'll have to set up a little studio down, in, down the hallway from where the locker room is and from where my office is. And then I'll, um, I'll get the lights set, I'll shoot that person, I'll go grab some food at the media room, finish that, go out, shoot pregame come back, transmit those images to uh, Getty Images, and then upload them to our home site. And then uh, the game starts, go out there, get ready. Um, I, I actually skipped one big part. We, we have a meeting every night before the game and all the photographers have to get in positions. Uh, so I try to sit with the whole group and, and there's a pecking order. And so photographers um, get, uh, they get positions with a, a hole, you know, that's in the glass. They can poke their lens through and shoot. Um, we get that thing set up. So, so everybody gets a chance to shoot the game from ice level. Of course, what is it like to shoot it from ice level and have your camera inside of that hole? Um, scary. It, it's, um, 
it's it's when when it gets really wild directly in front of you and and players are are going after a puck that's like right here at your feet it's um something you have to be aware of because sticks can can hit your lens um i've had a puck hit my lens three times two times it destroyed the lens um so i've had sticks come through the hole um it's exciting what are some of the favorite moments and memories while covering the Carolina Hurricanes? Um, I guess first and foremost probably has to be the Stanley Cup Finals, uh, Game Seven. There was pretty 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 much nothing like it uh, in sports. Um, and at that point in my life, I'd never shot anything that was as momentous. Um, a seventh game of the Stanley Cup Finals, where the Stanley Cup is. Uh, presented there's nothing bigger what is that moment like of course covering the stanley finals whenever carolina hurricanes have been in it um you know the the job for you is to um make the big pilot picture of the players on the ice and then um attempt to get a picture of every single player holding a cup over their head and then key people in the organization, you know, the ownership, the general manager, uh, of course, coaches and, and um, people like that. What was it like for you to cover this whenever Jeff Skinner was with the Hurricanes? What was that like covering Jeff Skinner? I was, I was hoping you'd ask about Jeff Skinner because Jeff Skinner was, um, was probably one of my favorites to photograph. He always smiled. Um, he, he could never make a serious face, not for long. And, um, you know, if any of you, any any of you and, or yourself got a chance to see him play, you know, that was an exciting player. He could skate and and he could score and um, nobody could celebrate better than him. Who are some of your favorite players besides, of course, Jeff Skinner you've covered? Um, Glenn Wesley. Um, he's he's a friend. And um, but but during his career, I loved I loved how serious he was on the ice and, and how, um, uh, how tough he was, you know, if he was hurt, you didn't know it. Um, if he was, if he was excited about something, you, you didn't know it. Uh, he tried to keep it right in there. So I enjoyed, I enjoyed, enjoyed that. Um, of course, Rod Brindamore, our captain, um, for several years, right through the Stanley cup finals and, and until he retired. And, and then, you know, he's the, the coach of the Carolina hurricanes head coach, um, he was um, he was an exceptional individual to photograph on a nightly basis, leadership like nobody else. Um, today, I, I really enjoy Spetch because um, he's uh, he's 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 finding a toughness that um, that I'm that I'm seeing over the 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 three the three seasons here. Just that as he's as he's grown, I'm, I'm seeing a certain amount of toughness, but there's still that smile and that exuberance for the game and. Uh, and the creativity that that he's brought to the game. So, and then um, a guy that I I saw play at the uh, Charlotte Checkers uh, when he was uh, you know really young, and then and then as a rookie at the uh, NHL with the Stanley with the uh, Carolina Hurricanes is um, Stephen Lorenz. And so Stephen is um, he's just a lot of fun, and he's he's fun to photograph, and he works hard every shift. Um, he always seems to find the camera. He always manages to find the camera. And I've actually had him on the ice turn and look at me over in the hole and smile when, when he's just gotten, you know, crushed down to the ice, maybe trying to slash to the goal. Of course, with you covering the checkers and you're covering the hurricanes, what is that like covering both teams and seeing those players move up to the hurricanes? Well, the, the Carolina Hurricanes uh, used to have um, their um, their AHL team in Charlotte, and of course they've moved them to Chicago now, so I don't get to see those guys anymore. But it was great, you know. the The road to Raleigh was, uh, and the road to the NHL was uh, only two and a half hour uh, drive, so players could play one night in this building in Charlotte, and then they would jump in the car and they could be on the ice the following night in Raleigh, North Carolina at the NHL level, maybe for their first time ever. What is it like to cover, of course, those players like Jeff Skinner who have moved on from the Hurricanes, but still come back, of course, whenever Buffalo comes to town? Uh, you know, um, we, we don't really get that close to the opposing team. Um, 
I have a position on the ice where the players coming out from the visiting side will come right by me. And I've, I've had a couple of guys give me a little tap with their stick when they're, when they're entering the ice or, or coming off the ice, especially one, one guy in particular had just scored on us and he came off the ice and he gave me a little shot with his stick. And I, and uh, I don't know, that was, that was kind of exciting, you know, just to, just to be acknowledged, you know, you remembered, I mean, we spent a lot of time together on the ice and, and, making uh making pictures uh studio you know stuff so you get a chance to communicate with them and i don't know it's just um it's just really neat to see a guy's career uh start with our team and 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 just have a really great career with us move on and and you know he still kind of remembers and um and acknowledge issue what's it like covering the hurricanes of course when the nashville predators and teams like pittsburgh penguins come to town now we have a nice little rivalry with them um that's um it's fun because the energy is, is, is up a little bit. And um, so, uh, yeah, anytime you can have somebody in the building that uh, creates a rivalry, it, there's a little bit, a little bit more jump on the ice from the, from the drop of the puck. What is something that you learned now that you didn't know before photographing team professional teams? Um, gosh, you know, that's a, that's a difficult question. I think every game, you, you, you learn something. Um, as a photographer, I think you learn something every game. Um, when, I, when I do workshops with, um, with young people in, uh, you know, in high school settings, you know, like um, the journalism um, kids, they come in with their cameras and, you know, and I tell them, I, I think the thing that you've got to, you've got to take from this is that you're going to learn something every single time that you go out. And it can be momentous, it can be a little thing, but it, all of it adds to what you're going to take to the next event. What advice would you give sports photographers looking to get started? Uh, I would say that you have to look at yourself now um, less as a sports photographer and more as a uh, collector of material that your client's going to want. So instead of going with the going into it with the idea that you're going to be a photographer and only a photographer, it will probably be more fruitful and more beneficial for you to uh, understand photography, maybe make that the thing that you're probably best at in terms of covering sports, but you, ne you need to learn um, video and you need to learn editing and you need to learn um, graphic design. And, um, and if you can, I don't think you have to master all of those things, but I think you have to understand those because, you know, this, this, this thing right here, this, this is right here in our pocket and it is the, it is the mechanism. It's the tool that every single person needs to have as part of their, um, part of their, uh, their equipment that they bring to the game. So, and, and since that's the thing that everyone's seeing your images on now, you better understand how it works and it, that that's going to incorporate graphic design and, and every other aspect. What advice would you give photographers looking to work on the college level and professional level, just like you did? So when you get into college, if this is something that you think you want to go into intern right away, get an internship of some sort. Um, just, just do something that, that is, if you like sports and if you, if you um, like photography, um, those are things that are going to make you want to get out of bed in the morning, right? So if you have an internship, you'll get out of bed, you'll go do things, you'll go to the classes you're supposed to go to, you'll do it on time. And then when you get to the, the sporting events, you'll just start soaking in the knowledge and the information. And uh, so get yourself an internship and, uh, and then try to get with a minor league team or, or, or a college, um, uh, college internship. And um, just really just immerse yourself in it because um, this, this photography business is no longer just a photography business. It's not, it's not like, it's not like when I got into it, when I got into it, it was actually really, really hard to do because you would shoot a picture and then you would just kind of cross your fingers, you know, sometimes and go, gee, I hope I made that picture because it was an action shot. Um, I made a, I made a photo one time of, um, of, a, of one of our players like flipping right upside down. Uh, in the middle, you know, of a play, and I had I have strobes like mounted in the ceiling. So when I make a picture, I only get to shoot one frame because the lights have to recycle. 
And this guy got flipped upside down. And, you know, back in those days, you'd have to process the film to know whether you got it or not. And um, it's pretty exciting, you know, when you when you would get your stuff and see a great picture. And then there are other times you thought you had imagery and you're like, uh oh, I I didn't expose that properly or this thing has changed a lot. It's changed an awful lot. So I think it's it's really, really important to have a lot of um, uh, different tools in your bag if sports photography and, and, and this sort of thing is what you want to do. That's wonderful advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media to find all of your amazing work? Um, I can I can be found on um, my uh, my Instagram at uh, GF. F O T O 89. Um, that's me on Instagram. And then um, I'm, you can Google my name anywhere um, and find my, my hockey, some of my football, some of my old basketball. I'm seeing pictures come up from the original Hornets back in 91, 92, 93, Muggsy Bogues and Del Curry, Alonzo Mourning, some of those guys. Um, so anyway, you know, I'm, I'm out there. I'm out there. Um, NC State uses a lot of my images for, uh, for football and that. Thank you again, Greg, for your interview, and best of luck in your future with the Carolina Hurricanes and everywhere else. Thanks, Brandon. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Greg, for your interview, and best of luck in your future. You're welcome. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.